His novel, Along the Border Lies, won the Penn Award. Um, his spoken word poem, Brown Dreams, has been viewed on YouTube 100,000 times. Please welcome Paul S. Flores. Um, when I was nine years old, my mother decided to marry a man with a red beard. Abuelo Enrique said, never trust a man with a beard. He could be hiding something. Cortez had a beard. And you remember what happened to Cuauhtémoc, don't you? I kept looking for signs of insincerity, but only found my stepfather's Viking grin. It was a staple of his old time personality. He loved drinking Jack Daniels and tooling around on his 1946 Roadster more than me or my mother. Four years later, we left the trim suburbs for a two-bedroom apartment, Chef Boy RD and coin laundry on Sunday. I never asked my mother why we gave up financial security, a chance at a nuclear family. She had a house with two stories. I had a feeling that some, some prophecies are self-fulfilling. I guess my mother found out the ugly truth about the bearded Viking, but decided to let me figure out what type of a man I would become. Would I choose to grow a beard or not? <laughs> my own father was a phantom, a wannabe philosopher who only called when he was inspired. He wrote dense letters packed like cigarettes with epistemology that burned my image of a man into an ashtray. He was not an Indian, but he still couldn't grow a beard or a bank account to save his life. One day your acquaintances might only be the people who serve you drinks. You will smell like old newspaper and damp corduroy. You will only be held to account by the poetic solitudes of your fatherless insecurities. Except now you have a son, and he wants to walk, more like run, hallway to the door, back and forth. But he is not yet one, so his kneecaps are still developing. So he falls and bangs his head on the hardwood floor, howling at the pain and the fright of falling. I act like nothing happened, as if I could fool him out of his tears. And my son is looking at me like I'm a bully. Something inside me tells me he's right. You see, I could be gone. Gone looking to find myself. The man I was supposed to be. Gone looking out for number one gone looking for God, gone to write my solitary adventure, corner stack of dog-eared books, pot of cold coffee, cigarette smoke, and sandwich meat. Yeah, I could grow a beard. Tell myself that this is what sacrifice and personal freedom really look like. But I want my son to trust the traits I carry. I want to pick him up from that howling place. I want him to sympathize and understand what dignity in the place of pride, what responsibility in the place of attitude, what a macho really looks like. So then I kiss his hands, and I kiss his knees, and I kiss his feet, so he knows men can be trusted not to leave, too. My father showed up one night to pick me up from my grandmother's house, take me to the drive-in movie. 
It was a humid summer evening in El Cajon. My father's car crackled over the gravel lot of the drive-in. We parked next to the short pole with a gray metal speaker attached. My father's thick, pale wrist reaches through the half-rolled window, cigarette dangling from his lips, a beer between his legs. He unlatches the speaker from the pole, attaches it to the driver's side window. My father takes a sip of his Michelob, and the movie sparks to life. Sound of fighting fills the car, and Bruce Lee appears on the screen, battling kung fu challengers and corrupt Chinese masters. Enter the dragon. The first movie I saw with bloody violence and naked women. The first movie I saw with my father. I was seven years old. I hadn't seen him in a couple years, so I didn't say much. The entire night, I hardly moved in my seat, never asked for candy or popcorn or soda, not because I was afraid to ask my father, but because the movie was so intense. My experience riveted by Bruce Lee, the man in the car next to me, emanating some power in his seat. My father, the movie. My father, the man. My father, the myth. My father, the focus, the swagger, the dance, the speedy power. I couldn't peel my eyes for two hours. And my father just sipped his beer. He smoked his cigarette. And he cackled every once in a while at what a badass Bruce Lee was. When it's over, my father drives me back to my grandparents' house. It's late, and just before he drops me off, he asks me, what did you think of the movie? I loved it. Don't tell your ma. She might get mad at me. She'd never take you to see a movie like that. So I told her he took me to see the Bruce Lee movie anyway. So typical of your father to do that, she said. I won't forgive him for taking a seven-year-old to an R-rated movie. It was one of the greatest examples of character he ever gave me. The flying fists, the sweet science, the long stare, the violent dance, the labyrinth of mirrors, the self-like water flow, the game inside the game, the teacher and the pupil, the philosophy. What was silent in the father speaks in the son. Didn't I feel unloved already? Before I knew what love was. Didn't I feel unloved already? Before I knew what love, love was. No one likes to deal with the broken heart. Rather shoot yourself sometimes, knowing it's gone, broken from the inside. Family is broken from the inside. Not what you dreamed it would be. Children won't see you in bed together anymore. No anticipated family vacations, no long anniversary example. No family heirlooms to pass down to grandchildren. No family photos. Divorce is one child's crisis, means the other is either the reason or must be part of the solution. Come together now like forced interdependence. Single parenting feels like raising a ghost family sometimes. Not what you dreamed it would be. Broken from the inside out. Like someone poked a tiny hole in your balloon. From the inside out, a slow deflation, a slow spinning chamber, a slow death, and you will cry. No one likes to deal with a broken heart. Ready to attach yourself to any pretty woman with a kind voice. Someone to sleep on the cold side of the bed and cradle your broken dreams at her breast. The ghost in you invites her embrace. The ghost in you invites her embrace.
La Llorona baptizes you in tears because she also carries old wounds. Nobody is clean and free of heartbreak. Nobody escapes the past. Isn't everybody wounded? Isn't every relationship an effect of the one before? Didn't my father leave me? Didn't he break my heart first? Didn't I feel unloved already? Before I knew what love was. Didn't I feel unloved already? Before I knew what love, love was. No one likes to deal with a broken heart. Leaving my children with their mother whenever I go out of town is a stress. I expect any minute to receive a call. Your daughter won't stop crying. Your son is sick. I can't handle it. I can't do this on my own. So though I earn a living on the road, in the theater, as a writer, a performer, I have children whose safety is compromised by my absence when the mother struggles to take care of them. I had doubts about choosing to be a professional artist and a father when she told me the way I was trying to make money hurt my ability to take care of my family. I should find a new line of work. You're not good enough, she said. Find a real job with insurance. And just write in your spare time. What could I say? But you won't have much spare time because I'm going to Puerto Rico for six weeks on vacation. And I'm leaving you with the kids. Sorry, but I had to use your credit card to buy the ticket. I leave next month. We still be. My empire of fog crowned hills. Through webs of electric muni lines, that tang of Phil's roasted coffee grinds. Scorched breath of San Francisco poets transmits passion of Ginsburg, Kaufman, De Prima, devotion of its exotics, its unions, legacy of Vargas, Herrera, Cervantes, its rituals and gangster politics. Its rituals and gangster politics where a dancer can steal your heart and hold it for ransom in a gallery named Crucible Steel. This muse, this muse, this muse, not just an obsession, it's a blood oath to embrace carnaval, where even the most straight-laced will cross-dress for a sake of adventure. This is San Francisco's heartbeat. This is San Francisco's heartbeat. My homie's house burned down. My homie's house burned down, and we read poetry in the ashes. My homie's house burned down, and we read poetry in the ashes. We raised some cash and his spirits with bottles of tequila and coronas, salted with tears to quench harsh throats. We told jokes. We told jokes and Marcus played hard bebop and my homie was wailing for his lost dog and the smoke of a broken pie that light induced inferno. Poetry heals. Poetry heals and the bebop revives. Poetry heals and the bebop revives. We never, we never, we never go softly into that dark night. This is San Francisco's heartbeat. This is San Francisco's heartbeat. They say blacks and Mexicans don't belong anymore. They say, they say can't afford to keep a family in a decent sized home anymore. But muni drivers are black and Latino teachers got white kids speaking Spanish, at least until Chicano becomes a four letter word. If you peel, if you peel the flyers from the telephone poles, you'll find broadsides, you'll find broadsides protesting gentrification of the Guayabera, 1920. 21 year olds or 2019 year olds, my broadsides were bilingual when it was illegal. 
They don't know how to stop this flow. A poetry evangelist with contraband, Mexican cigarettes by the pound. Yo soy delicado. Yo soy delicado. We liberated public space con queso, con el tambor y el chequere, con bass and saxophone with Jimmy Biala and David Molina and Howard Wiley and Marcus Shelby and Jenny Lim and Redessa Jones and Redessa Jones and Redessa Jones and bourbon and rum and smoke and drum with bourbon and rum and smoke and drum and we took Mani Crudo to the tool shed and we made Relampago Negro, that's black lightning, Relampago Negro this is San Francisco's heartbeat this is San Francisco's heartbeat it's the poets, it's the poets, it's the poets it's the poets, it's the poets it's the crazy drunk loud ass poets from the Mission, the Fillmore, the Bayview North Beach, Hunters Point people always want to know people always want to know what's so good about San Francisco I wasn't born here, but I ain't no tourist. I wasn't born here, but I ain't no tourist. And I know my way around. Broke so many hearts, but keep coming back for more. We speak easy at Bruno's in the corner of the bar. Her style Latin swing with strapless dress and high heels. Her brown skin so beautiful, want her to wear my ring. Represent her swagger with mestizo babies in a sling. We jazz fest in North Beach with tapas on the grass. We festival in Stern Grove. We carnival, we Baker Beach. Our baby's growing so fast. And we like to show them off on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and Google Plus. The Bay Area got them all. San Francisco is our heart. Many come to claim a throne. Many move to Oakland. Home is where I'm loved the most. So rise, San Francisco, like trolley train over Pacific Heights. We look to you for inspiration when life is about struggle. You make it possible to desire something different. You make it possible to believe. You make it possible to believe because we still believe. Yeah, we still believe. Yeah, we still believe. Yeah, we still be. Yeah, we still be. Yeah, we still be the heart beat of San Francisco. Paul S. Flores, thanks, man.